All right, so welcome again to Math for Elementary School Teachers, part two. Uh, the theme of this quarter is fractions. And we're going to look at fractions in a bunch of different ways. Uh, to start off, we have to look at a topic called number theory. And that's what we're going to do today in just a minute. And number theory is all about uh, factors of numbers, also known as divisors, multiples. And let's see, I just heard my doorbell ring virtually. And Michaela is with us. Welcome, Michaela. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm good. So we're just getting started with the content, and uh, I'm doing an outline of what the whole course is about. So uh, number theory, factors, divisors, multiples is the main theme there. Uh, and we're going to spend, there's a couple of sections on that. It's going to take us about three days to get through that. We need to work with factors and divisors in order to work with fractions, which is the second uh, official topic. Fractions like three fourths, that fraction bar is a division symbol. So that's the same as three fourths or three divided by four like that. And the idea of factors, divisors, and multiples are directly related in terms of reducing fractions, understanding what a fraction means, and then the process of adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. We need to know a lot about factors, multiples to make fraction mechanics work. So this is the fact, number theory is the warm up to be able to use fractions properly. Um, so once we get our basics of fractions down, uh, we're gonna jump into the third topic, which is decimals. And decimals really are just fractions, but they are special fractions. For example, it's slang to say 0.6. The true way to read that is 6 tenths to name the place value. So 0.6 is slang. 6 tenths is the proper way to read it, which also tells you how to convert to a normal fraction. So decimals are often referred to as decimal fractions because the denominators are all based on 10, hence the beginning decim, which means 10. Uh, so we'll play with decimals for a little while. And oh, Kayla must be having trouble joining. We have two Michaela's now. Hi, Michaela. Uh -oh. One of your sounds needs to be turned off, Michaela. There we go. Otherwise, we get wicked echo. Uh, so we'll play around with decimals for a little while. And then topics related to decimals and fractions, kind of miscellaneous stuff, are uh, ratio proportion and percent. And a ratio is one interpretation of what a fraction is. Ratios can be viewed as fractions or decimals. Proportion are two ratios compared to each other and percent is a special kind of ratio based on 100, hence the word cent over there. So this is all fraction stuff going on here. And then the fifth topic will be one of two things. It's either going to be probability or it's going to be an introduction to statistics. And I haven't decided which one we're going to do yet. We do not have time for both of those. We only have time for one of them. And the other will be covered in Math 213. So later in the quarter, we'll, we'll decide what to do there. And I'll probably pull you guys to, to, to figure that out. Because uh, the order is not too important, but some years I have a stronger opinion about which should be first uh, than other years. All right, so that's an outline of the whole quarter. Uh, let's get into the, the stuff that's closer to home and take a look at what number theory is. Uh, in its most basic sense, number theory is a study of divisibility. So I'm just going to make a couple of statements related to divisibility using divisibility and some other words. Um, so for example, 
six is divisible by two. Uh, what does that mean exactly for that six is divisible by two? Well, that uh, means a couple of things. If I take two and divide it into six, uh, then hopefully I remember my multiplication facts that three times two is six. And I get zero remainder. So one version of oops, the idea of being divisible is where we actually do a division and we find there's a zero remainder. If, there, if there's a, a remainder of, that's non-zero, then one number isn't divisible by another. That's one way to look at it. Uh, alternative way to look at it is uh, that we find a number to multiply, that two times some number is equal to six. And again, we know from multiplication facts that we've memorized that two times three is equal to six. So either we can look at div being divisible as the act of dividing and finding a zero remainder, or that we can find a number to multiply by to get the first number given. Right? So six is divisible by two because two times three is six, or because two goes into six three times with no remainder. So there's two different ways to explain what divisible means here. Other ways I could state that, I could then state that two is a factor of six. And sometimes instead of the word factor, we use the word divisor. So I could say two is a divisor of six. And each of these phrases, six is divisible by two, two is a factor of six, two is a divisor of six, they essentially mean the same thing. And I can explain it with either explanation A here or explanation B, okay? by using actual division with remainders or by stating it as a multiplication. Uh, another th statement that's related to these right here is to say that uh, six is a multiple of two. And that statement is true only because of this red statement here, that I can multiply something by two to end up with six. Uh, but these are four related statements there. And, and so our job, uh, this section, is to make sure we have a clear understanding about the difference between uh, a factor and a multiple. Factor is synonymous with divisor. It means that we have no remainder when division happens there. Questions on the, the basics of divisibility? Okay. Let me turn up my volume. I couldn't hear that. Try again. Uh, unfortunately, Amanda, something to do with my sound or yours. I couldn't hear anything you were saying. Could you try typing it into the chat? Not sure what's going on there. So I'm not sure if it's my sound or yours. No problem. I'll give Amanda to try and type in her. Uh, you can't see the bottom of the screen. Um, the bottom of the screen that I'm writing on. So the last thing I wrote was six is a multiple of two. So that's not visible to you. Okay. Is anyone else having that problem where they can't see the bottom of what my, my notebook? The black bar, the bottom black bar of the meeting is covering it. Oh, interesting. Why would that happen? Um, trying to remember on Zoom, can you move that? Does it let you put the bar somewhere else? There should be a way to get it to either disappear or move. All right, so. Um, oh, if you drag your mouse to the bottom of the table. Oh, we lost you there, Lauren. Can you try again? 
if you drag your mouse to the bottom of your computer, it'll get rid of the black bar because I can see your screen perfectly fine. All right. So if anyone's having trouble seeing, play around with the mouse near the bottom of the screen, see if that changes things. Hopefully that fix it. Otherwise, I will try to avoid writing near the bottom. Okay. All right, so um, new page then, let's go to the top. Uh, so let's, I'll just bring up a, a different example. Let's take a look at uh, eight for a minute as a number. And uh, as far as eight goes, I could represent it in a lot of different ways. So I'm just gonna get physical with eight. Uh, I could say eight represents a rectangle that is two by four. And so here I have eight squares thrown into a rectangle. The rectangle is four by two or two by four, depending on your perspective. Um, so often I like to write the base first and then the height. Uh, so a slightly different way to come up with eight is to draw it as two by four. So here I have a two by four version of eight. Um, are there other rectangles I can make that represent eight? Anybody have a, an idea on that? one by eight, yeah. So uh, if I went one by eight, then the base would be one and the height would be eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I would put the top there. So this would be a one by eight to show eight squares. And I think that's pretty physically different than an eight by one if we go out this way. Do that right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. So here's my eight by one version of it. And the looking at a number as a collection of uh, squares in a rectangle tells me a couple of things. Uh, looking at the first one, I can see that four is a factor of eight. I can also see two as a factor of eight. And anytime I have a statement about a factor, I can reverse it to make a statement about a multiple. So uh, this statement that four is a factor of eight also tells me that eight is a multiple of four. Or for the next one, that uh, eight is a multiple of two. Uh, restating either of these factor statements, for example, four is a factor of eight, uh, I could write it in terms of divisibility. Eight is divisible. By four. So we have lots of ways in our language that we talk about this, this relationship and, and it can happen in multiple ways. There's a mathematical abbreviation of this statement right here. So instead of writing out all of those words, I could say that uh, four divides eight. Okay. And so that's the way that's read. Four divides And so when you're reading in the book, you'll see some divisibility statements that come up in the mathematical version like this. Uh, and again, this would be four divides eight. So it's kind of like um, the, the long division symbol, right? Where we take four and we let it go into eight. So it's kind of related to that right there. Uh, let's see. So we have uh, statements as a factor, statements as a multiple. We can state factors or multiples in terms of being divisible. Um, and uh, the different ways I can make rectangles tell, tells me, uh, you know, a variety of different things. Uh, for example, eight has many factors, right?
if I exhaust all of the ways I can make rectangles with eight squares, then I can see if I list them in a order, from smallest to largest, eight has one, two, four, and eight as factors. And a number can be a factor of itself. It can be divisible by itself because there's no remainder when we do that, right? So eight is a factor of itself. Two different reasons. Uh, one reason, let's call it reason A, could be that, well, if I take eight into eight, it goes in once with a remainder of zero. Reason B, that it's a factor, so one number is a factor of another, if I can find something to multiply by another whole number to get the number I want, and eight times one is eight, so yeah, it, eight is a factor of itself for each of these two reasons. Uh, now, some people don't really like that. They like the idea of factor being smaller. Uh, and so we have another piece of terminology here, the idea of a proper factor. And proper factors are less than the given number. So uh, the proper factors of eight would just be one, two, and four. So we have factor, which is kind of a general idea, and then proper factor is going to be smaller than the number we started with. Um, let's see, what should we take a look at next? I am going to stop that part.